Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be making a simple image carousel in JavaScript and SAS, but you can use you can follow along with just regular old CSS if you want to. I just like using SAS because the nesting looks it makes it easier to read. So this is what we're going to be making. Rotates the images through with a forward and back button, and then we have these little buttons down here, bubbles that we can click and switch to whatever image we want. So let's get started. Okay, so this is what we have in the HTML. We have a div with a class of image carousel, and inside of it we have four children. Class of inner, and that has every single image in it. We're just using four. And we have a div with a class of bubbles, and then previous and next button is what these two are going to be. We're going to be using sass and basically an empty sass file starting out with and an empty javascript file as well and this is what it looks like right now so the first thing we're going to do is put all of these images in a horizontal row so that we can then just slide it to the correct position to display the image that we want so in order to do this we're going to give the inner uh, image container a display of flex like that and now they're all in a nice horizontal row and what this is going to allow us to do is if we say width 640 pixels and height is 480 pixels because that's the size of my images and then say overflow hidden on this container then we'll just see that one image if we give this a position of relative so that we can use a position absolute on the inner element and then we can say left is say like negative 640 pixels and it'll display the second image but by default this is left uh, zero and that displays the first image which is what we want Okay, now let's hop over to the JavaScript and get things up and running over there. So what we're going to do is select all these carousels, document, get elements by class name, image carousel, and then for each of those, We'll get the carousel and we'll define a couple of variables just referencing um, some of the elements inside there so we'll have a next button um, get elements by class name next first one of those previous button get elements by class name previous first one of those the only one of those uh, let's see, what else do we have? Bubbles and inner bubbles. And inner. And we'll have an array of images. And that should be good for now. And on the next and previous buttons, which actually we can't see, we should fix that. Say next after and um, previous after, style these similarly. Content is like that. Um, display, wait, no, not display. Position absolute. We'll position these with a top of 50%, so they'll be halfway down. Um, the next button is going to have a right property of zero, but the previous is going to have a left of zero. Um, let's see, right now, well, you we can hardly even see it right there, so I'm going to give it a background color white. A width of 1m, height of 3m, 
and um, font yeah. weight bold font family sans serif there we can see them now but uh, this height right here is one half and then starting at about right here all the way down here that's half the height again so these are sitting right below the center line. So we have to move these up 50% of their height. And to do that, we'll use transform, translate y, negative 50%. And that needs to be inside the parentheses. And now those are correctly centered uh, horizontally, or vertically, vertically centered. Um, and we have, no. Oh, this right here should have a content of that. So it looks like a previous button. There we go. Um, these, the, the text should be also vertically centered. And to do that, we'll use a line height of 3m. Now those are centered properly. I'm going to give this a um, border box, no, box sizing, a border box so I can then say padding of one or probably 0.2m. Oh, that's too much. Padding uh, 0.1m like that. That looks good. Oh, maybe bring this up one more. Um, since we're using M's, I'm going to say font size is like 20 pixels. No, those are bigger. They look good. Cursor, pointer, and we'll give them a hover effect too. So I'll say opacity 0 0.25, and then a hover effect. So ne next, hover, after, and previous, hover, after. Opacity, 1, and we'll give it a transition too, so it animates. Transition, opacity, 0 0.1 seconds linear. That looks good. Um, maybe just half the opacity. All right, that looks good, but clicking on them doesn't do anything, so we'll have to fix that by saying next, add event listener, click. Well, what we want to do is increment the what index of what image is showing. So we're, we'll have to have a counter for that. So current image index equals zero. And so here we'll say current image index plus plus. If current image index is greater than or equal to, equal to uh, the number of images that we have, then we'll just loop around and set it back to zero. Current image index equals zero. If we didn't want it to loop around, we would just set it to images.length minus one. But I want it to loop around, so we're gonna say zero. And then we'll call a function that we haven't made yet called switch image. And we'll do a very similar thing for the previous button. Whoops. Um, but this is going to be minus minus and if this is less than zero we'll set it equal to images dot length minus one so that'll loop around backwards and then we'll switch image to whatever this current image index is right now so we'll define that function now switch image switch image and what we want to do is set the left style of this inner element uh, to a negative value reflecting whatever image is currently being shown. So to do that, well, how large are the images? The width of the images is 640 pixels. So what we'll do is we'll say inner style left equals negative width, because it has to be a negative value because we're moving it to the left well, when you press the next button, negative width times current image index 
and then plus pixels so it knows what unit we are looking at. So now if I refresh and if I refresh and click this button, it's not working because this is not a function. What did I do? What line was that? Line three. Of course, for each call. There we go. Now clicking on the next button works properly. And the previous button also works properly. Now let's make this animate. Um, because since we're just setting the left property, uh, we can we can have a uh, transition here and we'll say transition left 0 0.25 seconds ease out. So now if I press this button, it animates. And of course, um, looping around it animates all the way backwards or forwards or whatever. And that, well, this is animating, which is just great. And now let's add those buttons, those little bubbles on the bottom that tell you how many images there are and which one you're on. So to do that, when we first load, we'll say for um, let i equal zero, i is less than images dot length, i plus plus. And then we'll say b equals document create element a span uh, with a class of um, bubble. We will append that to the bubbles uh, container element B, which uh, I'm actually going to rename this to bubbles container bubbles container because I want an array here called bubbles that will push B to so bubbles that push B. Now we should have if I inspect this really quickly, um, we should have four bubbles, correct. And let's style those up so we can see them and they look nice. Okay, so I'm going to give this a display of flex and we'll say justify content center position absolute bottom zero left zero right zero. Um, and margin bottom five pixels. We'll give each of the bubbles a margin of 2.5 pixels and they're gonna have a background color of white and they're gonna be round. So a border radius of some extremely large number. And we'll give them a width and height. Width of 10 pixels and a height of 10 pixels and a display of inline block. So now we have these four bubbles here, but we don't want them all to be full white. We only want the one that is current, the one representing the image that is currently selected to be full white. I'm actually zoomed in here, so. So we'll say opacity. 0.25 and then bubble that is active will give an opacity of 1 and one that is hovered over will give an opacity of 0 0.65 and we'll add a transition for the opacity um, 0 0.1 seconds linear so now if you hover over them, they light up and we have to set the proper one to be active. So during switch image, we'll say, we'll loop through all the bubbles for let, um, let i equal zero i. Actually, we can say bubbles for each b and i. If i equals current image index, 
then um, we'll add the active class. Otherwise, we'll remove the active class. So that way, when I click this, this, um, this bubble is now highlighted properly. And that works just right. But if I refresh the page, it's not shown highlighted um, at first. So that means down here, when we first load, we'll have to call switch image right off the bat because that will initialize that dot to being highlighted at first. And I'm going to say cursor pointer for these because we want to make it so if you click on them, it'll switch to that image. To do that, up here when we first initialize these bubbles, we'll say b dot add event listener, click. Then we'll say current image index equals i and switch image. If I refresh and click this button, then it switches just to the image that we wanted. Perfect. And these buttons work. And there we go. That is how you make a simple image carousel in JavaScript and SAS. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.